Lightning. It's intense, quick, and powerful. It's also a fairly common occurrence, yet we know relatively little about it. In fact, we don't even have a theory for how lightning forms. Although this video isn't going to present a theory for the internal workings of lightning, a useful model is going to be presented that allows us to calculate some pretty interesting things associated with lightning. So, there's three big questions that come to mind when thinking about lightning. It's what's its size, like its length, uh, how fast does it travel, and what's its energy? So first, how large is a lightning bolt? Do we measure its length or its uh, expanse and area? How fast does lightning travel? How much energy is in a lightning bolt? So we're going to answer all of these questions using the power of fractal analysis that we've been developing in the previous videos. The intention of this video is to show just how powerful fractal analysis can be. In fact, we won't even need the full theory to compute interesting properties. So no measure theory or calculus required. Okay, so how long is a typical lightning bolt? As we've been discussing, that's kind of an ill-posed question. The real question is, how long is a lightning bolt if the measuring apparatus measures down to a certain length scale? It's a bit pedantic, but it is completely necessary to really answer the question. So, you could start by looking at the global length scale. That's the length from the cloud cover to the ground. And it measures uh, basically the linear length. But really, uh, we have other parts of the bolt uh, that are kind of more intricate than just measuring from point A to point B. Uh, these points are, you know, more intricate, complex, and they're actually a fractal because the length is effectively infinite because uh, as you shrink down your measuring apparatus, it gets longer and longer and longer. Okay, so the actual lightning bolt then is the shortest path connecting the cloud cover to the ground, but you actually have to go through the lightning bolt. Other parts of the bolt matter, but... One can argue that these fringe bolts die out in such a way that their length is inconsequential with respect to the main bolt. I am actually hoping to do a video where I discuss this in more depth, but for right now we can understand this as a removal of all parts of the bolt with fractal dimension or length scale less than the main bolt. Okay, so what's happening at the microscopic level? So I provided a amateur diagram, and at this scale, we have electrons individually interacting with molecules of air. So since most air is composed of nitrogen, I've only really drawn the nitrogen uh, diatomic, you know, structures. And so uh, we have the electron moving in a linear fashion until it gets really close to these uh, atoms. And when it does get close to an atom, the probability that a photon will be exchanged with the atom increases. When a photon is finally exchanged, the nitrogen's atom's energy level is raised and the electron is repulsed away from the atom. This happens all uh, in the span of less than a second, hundreds of millions of times. Since we have so many interactions, it makes sense to talk about the average distance between photon exchanges. This quantity is referred to as the mean free path. This scale is fundamentally important to our investigation. Below this scale, the motion of the electron is linear in a probabilistic sense, and above this scale, the path is highly nonlinear and fractal-like. Essentially, this is the scale at which fractal analysis breaks down and quantum electrodynamics is needed to properly describe the electron. So, here's the Feynman diagram for uh, what's being described with a rough semi-classical diagram. Essentially, uh, each line corresponds to a factor that goes into an integral. Computing the integral gives you a probability for the diagram. This is the probability that this event transpires. After summing over every possible way this event could happen, the statistical description is complete. Okay, so this really isn't necessary here unless, like, you want a Nobel Prize or something. So we're just going to uh, kind of, like, move on. And, okay, so here is a video of the lightning. So you can see what's, like, actually happening here.
So it's traveling, and it's taking the path of least resistance, basically. You're going to see that uh, it's basically having all these tendrils go down. And once we find one that has the least path of resistance, once it hits the ground, you get a big flash because all the electrons then are attracted along the path of least resistance. And you can once again see uh, that all of these other tendrils go away, and you're left with one main bolt. Okay. So we have a pretty good qualitative understanding of what's happening. It's time to throw some math at it so we can pull numbers out of our model. So first, recall the notion of length and area. If you try and cover a unit box with smaller boxes of a half unit length, it takes four boxes to do so. However, if you want to cover a unit line with half length unit lines, it only takes two. This is described by the above formula. Delta uh, is the global length of the line, or box, or in our case, lightning bolt. Epsilon is the length scale uh, of a covering line or box. For lightning, this length will be the mean free path. Okay, and uh, D of F is the dimensionality of our object. For a line, this number is 1. For a box, the number is 2. However, for lightning, this number will be some number between 1 and 2. Now, each covering box we use contains part of our object. Since we want the length of our bolt, we have to multiply each box by the length of the lightning contained in it. This amount will be proportional to epsilon. Putting this all together, we obtain an equation for the length of a lightning bolt measured at some scale epsilon. Okay, so let's quickly discuss the various scales involved in our model. The first is the length of the bolt at the minimum scale, epsilon. Assuming the electrons are traveling near this speed of light, we see that it takes some amount of time, uh, T of P, for the bolt to travel from the cl clouds to the ground. The next scale is epsilon, the mean free path. So it takes some amount of time, T of F, for the electron to cover this amount of speed distance. This is also the amount of time an electron travels undisturbed by the surrounding air particles. The final length scale is delta. This is the direct linear distance from the clouds to the ground. The time T of L in this case denotes the amount of time an electron would take to travel this distance if it was completely unperturbed. We can then order the relevant time scales in order uh, of their size. So we have uh, T of F less than T of L less than T of P. Okay, so now that we've set everything up, let's actually solve for the amount of time an electron, uh, you know, travels unperturbed, since uh, it's basically the only question about lightning that we can't directly see from photographs. So we can do this by substituting our time relations into the length equation we previously derived. It's pretty much algebra at that point. Simplifying, we get our expression, and multiplying by the speed of light, we can also get the mean free path length for the electron. So here are our two important equations for the mean free path and... We also have an equation for the total propagation time of the electron. Okay, so let's put in the values uh, that are relevant for us so we can get some numbers out of our equations. Most of these are pretty easy to find online. Uh, let's see, for instance, we have uh, 2,000 meters to 4,000 meters. That's about the average height of cloud cover. And then... Uh, we also have uh, the fractal dimension, which is pr actually completely estimated uh, by the photo uh, provided in the first clip, and that's 1.3 to 1.4. And then we also have a theoretical prediction of 1.35 to 1.39. We're going to actually use both. And then we have uh, the propagation time of the video I showed, which is about a tenth of a second. Now, to get that value, uh, I just looked at the frames per second provided uh, in the video, which is about 7,000 frames per second, and then I took the uh, 60 frames per second that corresponds uh, to the real world, and then I just uh, divided those out. And so that's how I got 0.1 seconds. 
Okay, and then we finally have the speed of light, which is going to be very relevant to our calculations. Okay, so using these values, we get that the mean free path is about 60 nanometers or 70.79 nanometers if you use the more specific value for the fractal dimension. This should be compared to the values given on Wolfram for the mean free path of air. Okay, so if we use uh, these values uh, for the mean free path, then we can actually also derive the propagation time. And doing this, we get about 0.07 seconds or 0.09 seconds, uh, respectively, for each fractal dimension estimate. Now, uh, that's actually pretty close to the 0.1 seconds that we saw in the video. And I did use a bit of a weird method to get that. So uh, really, either of these values could really be considered the true value. Okay, so finally, if you are willing to work a bit, you can derive the total energy in a typical bolt of lightning. So, since we have the mean free path, we know that the number of interactions along the electron's path is equal to the travel length divided by the mean path. We also know that each of the electron's interactions is uh, causing energy to be radiated in the form of protons. At this level, quantum uh, interactions uh, are very important. Finally, uh, since I have no interest in doing a uh, full quantum electrodynamics calculation, we'll just assume that an average interaction with a photon causes the energy of the nitrogen to rise one-fourth of a energy level. Now, once the first several electrons have carved out the path of least resistance, the others are going to follow the same path. So we multiply by the length of travel divided by the mean free path. However, the air temperature will be much, much hotter. In fact, it'll be about 30,000 Celsius or 53,000 Fahrenheit. This means that the mean free path will increase. So, collecting up all the values that will be relevant is a bit of a chore, but it's not very difficult uh, if you just use uh, Wikipedia and Wolfram. I'll actually provide some links in the uh, description. So, if you put everything together, you will get about 1.1 billion joules for the energy. Okay, so that's enough power to power a home for a month, melt a ton of steel, or run an experiment at CERN. Okay, so we've been seeing this graph here. What is this? This is the uh, length of the lightning bolt versus the height of cloud cover. As you can see, it's a nonlinear relationship. And it, you can also look at the distances and see these are incredibly large distances. For instance, uh, for a typical bolt, even though the linear distance traveled is only a couple thousand meters, the actual length of a bolt is enough to nearly wrap around the Earth. Okay, so that's about it. Uh, I might do an, another uh, more in-depth look at lightning in another video. Really, I just do whatever catches my interest. So if you like the video, you know, su subscribe or whatever. So, uh, thanks.